everyone, this is Andy from My Guys Know How, and today I'm going to teach you how to set up and use your brand new Apple TV. Before we get started, let's open your Apple TV. This Apple TV has 128 gigabytes of storage, supports wireless and ethernet network connection, and 4K streaming. The first thing you see when you open the box is the Apple TV on the top. Pull out the cardboard divider to reveal the remote and the power cable. At the bottom is the information booklet for your new device. Remove the protective plastic from the Apple TV remote, and you can see the buttons on the front and the side. The Apple TV remote has a USB-C port for charging. The charging cable for your Apple TV remote is not included, but any USB-C cable will work. Next, we'll remove the power cable from the cardboard sleeve. One side plugs into the wall, and the other connects to the Apple TV. Last, we have the Apple TV itself. There are three connection ports on the back, one for power, one for HDMI, and one for an Ethernet cable. Before we get started, you should also familiarize yourself with the buttons on the Apple TV remote. You can see at the top you have the power button. You hold this button down to turn the TV on and off, and you can click this button just once to access the control panel in the top right-hand corner of your Apple TV home screen. You also have the arrow keys and the select button. You can go up, down, left, right, and the center button in the middle is select. This button is the back button. This will take you back out of whatever you're doing one step at a time. This button is called the TV button. This button will either take you to the Apple TV app or it will take you to the home screen on your Apple TV. Below those buttons, we have the play pause button, the mute button, and the volume up and down buttons. On the side of the remote, you also have the microphone button. You'll press this down and hold it when you wish to speak into the microphone. Now we can get started with the setup of your brand new Apple TV. The first thing that you're going to need to do is plug the Apple TV into power and then connect it to your TV using an HDMI cable. If you have a networking cable near the TV where you're installing this Apple TV, you can connect that in this port here. When you're turning on your Apple TV for the first time, you may need to use your television remote to turn on your television and select the correct HDMI source. First, you'll be asked to select a language for your Apple TV system, and you'll be asked to select the region or country that you'll be using your Apple TV in. On this screen, you'll be asked to accept the data and privacy terms and conditions, and then from here, you can set up your Apple TV to your iCloud account. If there is another Apple TV that is already associated with your iCloud account, you can use this page here to sign into your iCloud account, and it will automatically transfer all of your settings from your past Apple TV to this current one that you're setting up now. Since this is the first Apple TV that we're setting up, we're going to go ahead and select Set Up Manually. Now you'll be asked to set up Siri for your Apple TV. If you would like to use Siri on your Apple TV, select Use Siri. Next, you'll be asked to share audio recordings with Apple to help improve Siri and dictation. We recommend that you select Not Now. Now it's time to set up the Wi-Fi for your Apple TV. From this list, select your Wi-Fi network and enter the password. You can either use the arrows and the selection button to type out your password, or you can hold down the microphone button on the side of the remote and spell it out. If you use the microphone button to spell out your password, make sure you speak clearly and you spell out every letter of your password. Make sure you also specify whether your letters are capital or lowercase. Since we decided to set up this Apple TV manually, this page now is where you can log into your iCloud account if you have one. For now, we're going to skip this step. These next few pages will ask you a couple questions about location services and analytics. We recommend that you enable location services and share analytics data with Apple. If you have a cable TV provider that allows you to stream live TV from an app, such as the Xfinity Stream app, you can sign into that account here on this page. We recommend that you skip this step. On this page, you'll select the location for your Apple TV. You can select from this list of pre-programmed names, or you can add in your own custom name for the room at the bottom. On this page, you'll be asked if you want to automatically download new wallpapers from Apple every week. We recommend that you turn this setting on. On this page, you'll be asked if you want to try Dolby Vision. Dolby Vision is not compatible with most TVs, so we recommend leaving this setting off. Now that you've completed all the initial setup steps, the next thing you need to do is update your software. What you're going to do is on the home screen, go to the settings app, click system, and then click software update. On this page, you can see that the Apple TV is set to automatically update the software as new updates come out. However, because you're setting up this Apple TV for the first time, you should manually check for updates. On this page, select software update to start the download and installation of the software. It can take up to five minutes for the Apple TV to fully reboot.
Now that your Apple TV is fully up to date, we're going to sign into your Apple ID account so you can start setting up your streaming services and apps. To sign into your Apple ID, you're going to go to Settings, Users and Accounts, and then Add Default User. If you would like to add any additional users to your Apple TV, you can select New User after you add the first default user. There are two ways that you can sign into your iCloud account. The first one is to use an iPhone or an iPad that you have already signed into your Apple ID on, or you can set it up manually. If you choose to sign in with your iPhone or iPad, you can follow the instructions on the screen to be able to do that. Otherwise, I'm going to show you how to sign in manually. In order to sign in manually, we'll go back to the Users and Accounts page. We'll select Add Default User, and then we'll select Sign In Manually. On this page, you'll be able to sign into your iCloud account using your email and your password. First, you'll select email or phone number, and then you'll use the on-screen keyboard to type in your email or your phone number that is associated with your iCloud account. You can also use the microphone button on the side of the remote to spell out your email address. When you're done entering your email or phone number, click Next. After that, you'll be prompted to enter in your password. Once again, you can use the on-screen keyboard to type it out manually, or you can use the microphone button on the side of your remote to spell out your password. Be sure that when you're spelling out your password, you specify whether your letters are capital or lowercase. Once you're finished entering in your email and your password, you'll be taken back to this screen where you can select Continue to sign into your iCloud account. After you sign in, you'll receive a two-step verification code to another Apple device that you've logged into previously. On this screen, you can use the remote to enter in that code. Once your account has been authenticated, you'll be signed in as the default user. You'll be brought back to the Users and Accounts screen where you can add an additional user if you need to. Otherwise, you can click on your own name to change some of the settings that are associated with your Apple ID account on this new Apple TV. The first setting that we recommend changing under the default user's account is to turn on one home screen. One home screen is a feature of the Apple TV that allows users to keep the same apps and appearance across multiple Apple TVs. We recommend that customers with more than one Apple TV turn this setting on so that the appearance of their home screen is the same across every Apple TV in their home. If you ever need to remove a user or account from your Apple TV, you can scroll to the bottom of this list and you'll see that there's an option to remove user. Next, we recommend that you also change a couple of the settings for the Apple TV remote. To get to those settings from this page, you'll hit the back button twice and then scroll down to remotes and devices. From the remotes and devices page, you'll select click pad and then you'll scroll down and select click only. Changing this setting disables the touchpad on the select button of your Apple TV remote. The next setting we're gonna change on the Apple TV remote is the TV button. Back on the Remotes and Devices page, if you scroll down, you will see the setting for the TV button. Right now, it is set to take you to the Apple TV app whenever you press that button. If you click Select on the TV button option, it will change it so that the TV button now takes you to the home screen of the Apple TV rather than the Apple TV app. If you ever need to rename your Apple TV, you can do that easily by going to the Settings app and then selecting General, About, and then Name. Here you can use the on-screen keyboard to type in a new location name for your Apple TV, or you can use the microphone button on the side of the remote. Next we're going to go over how to download and sign into any apps you would like to have on your Apple TV. From the home screen, use the arrow keys to find the App Store and use the Select button in the center to launch the application. The first time you launch the App Store, you'll get a nice little welcome message. Go ahead and click Continue to proceed. Within the App Store, you can scroll around to find recommended apps for you, or you can use the search function if you're looking for something specific. Once you find an app you would like to download, use the Select button on the remote to launch the application screen, and then you can click Download. Since I've already downloaded this app on a different Apple device, it shows the cloud icon so that it's downloading from my iCloud. However, if this is the first time that you're downloading this, it will say Git. Once the application is downloaded, you'll see a new button there to launch the app. Depending on the application that you just downloaded, your screen now will look a little bit different, but for the most part, you'll be prompted to either create an account or sign into an existing account. Most applications will allow you an option to either complete the sign-in manually using the remote, or you'll be given a QR code or a website to log in using a mobile device. For each different application you wish to download, you will have to return to the home screen and relaunch the App Store. Some apps may ask your permission to track your activity across other apps and websites. Generally speaking, when this pop-up occurs, we recommend that you select Ask App Not to Track. 
And once again, you can see that the app gives you multiple options to sign in or create an account. You can see that this application looks slightly different from the other one that we downloaded, but for the most part, your options are going to be the same. If you choose to sign in manually on your Apple TV, you can use the remote and the on-screen keyboard to type in your username and password, or you can use the microphone button on the side of the remote to spell out your username and password. If you choose to use your phone to sign in, you'll be given a QR code on the screen to scan, which will take you to a website where you can log into your account. Each time you finish signing into an application, you can use the TV button or the back button to return to the Apple TV home screen. As you download applications to your Apple TV, you will see the icons for these new applications appear on the home screen. If you've purchased any movies or TV shows from iTunes, those will be accessible in the library of your Apple TV app. You can access your Apple TV library by launching the Apple TV app using the left arrow to show the menu and then scrolling down to get to where it says library. Now that your Apple TV is completely set up, I want to show you a couple more tips on how to use your Apple TV. First, I want to show you the control panel. A quick press of the power button on the Apple TV remote will bring up the control panel. In the control panel, you can select power off to turn the Apple TV off. You can also press and hold the power button to turn off the Apple TV and your television. Also in the control panel, you'll see buttons for the Wi-Fi settings, do not disturb, a sleep timer, and a couple other small settings. You can also use the control panel to switch between users that are already signed into the Apple TV, or you can add a new user as well. You can also use your Apple TV remote to rearrange the apps on your home screen. To do this, first you need to highlight the app that you would like to move, hold down the select button on the remote, and then select edit home screen. Once you do that, you'll be able to use the arrow keys to move the app around as you need to, or you can also use the touchpad to move it with your finger. Once you've placed the app where you would like it to remain, hit the select button again to make the change permanent. If you have an app on your Apple TV that's frozen or unresponsive, an important troubleshooting step you need to know is how to force quit the app. In order to do that, first you'll double click the TV button on your Apple TV remote. Then you'll use the left and right arrows to select the app you want to force quit, and then you'll double click the up arrow to force quit the app. Once you're done, you can hit the TV button or the back button to return to the home screen. Another important troubleshooting step you'll need to know is how to restart your Apple TV. In order to do this, you'll go to Settings, and then System, and then click Restart. Be careful not to click Reset just above it, as that will reset your Apple TV to the factory settings. Once your Apple TV is finished restarting, it should turn back on by itself. If you're unable to restart your Apple TV from the system settings, you can also unplug the Apple TV from power to reboot the device. And now with all of that completed, you're finally ready to start enjoying your brand new Apple TV. Thank you for following along with this tutorial today. If you had any questions or concerns while following this tutorial, please don't hesitate to reach out so we can assist you further. This concludes our tutorial on how to set up your new Apple TV. Happy streaming!